Hey everyone, welcome back to a top 10 facts video. Today we're going to go over 10 facts about the Darksaber. Now if you haven't seen my other top 10 facts videos, I have a whole playlist on them, so go check them out at your convenience. Now when we look at the Darksaber, the weapon that was so savagely used by Maul and many before him, it's not hard to imagine all the ways that this blade is different from a typical lightsaber. So what makes it so unique, and what benefits those small changes might make to the wielder? While the origins of this blade itself are quite murky and not really fully actualized, especially since Disney hasn't clarified the new canon's position of the ancient tales of the Jedi from 5000 BBY to 4000 BBY, there's a lot of valuable information here that can help you understand why the Darksaber is so important. Starting in at number 10, shorter than a lightsaber. Unlike most lightsabers that the Jedi wielded, the Darksaber was slightly shorter. At three feet in average length, the lightsabers of Ulik Keldroma and ki Mundi were able to strike at opponents over a meter away from them. But the Darksaber was a bit different. Although many records indicate that the Darksaber might have been just as long, the main sources on the matter differ, and agree that it was stockier. As we know, the Darksaber was also a version of a lightsaber, but its shorter length meant that it was a quicker weapon to wield, and one that could more accurately be used to plunge through the weak joints of Beskar armor, which its original owner would need to do when he returned to Mandalore to claim leadership. Number 9. Looks like a Beskad or a Katana The Darksaber was a flat, seemingly single-bladed weapon, like the original Beskad that the earliest Mandalorians wielded, or Vibrosaurs, that were infamous among some of the BX series droids in the Clone Wars. The Darksaber looked much more like an ancient Jedi Katana. While the inspiration for this design hasn't been settled, as the records of its creator Tar Vizsla remain incomplete, it's hard to deny the similarities between the Darksaber and the Beskad. Number 8. Emotions could affect the blade, like original Force Sabers. Like the original Force-imbued blades of Tem Madog on Tython, a user's emotional state could affect the type of power the Darksaber emitted. When extremely angered or enraged, the Darksaber seemed to crackle with more arcs of electricity. As most of the lightsabers of the Ancient Order were equipped with a power modifier, like the one Exar Kun used to break the Beskar tomb of Frieden Nad, it's not unlikely that the Darksaber was always able to increase its power output, instead of merely being a sign of its bearer's ability in the Force. Number 7. Made by the first Mandalorian to ever be accepted into the Order as we all know, the Force Saber owes a lot of its design to ancient Mandalorian culture, and there's a reason for this. The weapon was actually the design of the very first Mandalorian to be accepted into the Jedi Order, millennia before Anakin Skywalker was ever recruited. That first Mandalorian Jedi, who we know as Tar Vizsla, was tasked to create a lightsaber just like every other Padawan or Knight, but he chose a unique design for his weapon perhaps in the fashion of the best god, the ancient Mandalorian sword. Number 6. Family Heirloom of the Vizsla Clan Later when Tar went back to his home planet of Mandalore and won the title of leader of the Mandalorians, the Darksaber became a symbol of his rule. In the years following his death, the Darksaber passed through the hands of his clan, the Vizsla, for generations until it ultimately came to Din Djarin. Number 5. Obi-Wan fought against it after the Darksaber was stolen from the ancient Jedi Temple, memory of the weapon faded from history until it reappeared in a battle against Obi-Wan Kenobi. Pre Vizsla, a far distant descendant of Tar Vizsla, wielded the Darksaber when he challenged Obi-Wan Kenobi during the Clone Wars. Number 4. Darth Maul used it to fight General Grievous. Shortly after escaping captivity within Count Dooku's jail in the comic series run Son of Dathomir, which takes place between the Clone Wars, which I really hope we get an arc for one day, Darth Maul and his Mandalorian warriors, I call them the Maul-Delorians, found themselves in battle against Separatist forces. Their commander was General Grievous, the lightsaber-wielding cyborg that Obi-Wan Kenobi would ultimately defeat on Utapau, bringing about the end of the Clone Wars. In their duel, Darth Maul deftly used the shorter Darksaber to parry Grievous' blades, but the former Sith Lord was at too great a disadvantage. As he looked around the battlefield and listened to the cyborg boast in his hoarse, hacking voice, Maul realized that he might be able to defeat Grievous in the duel, but he would need to lose his troops in the process. Maul decided to retreat, even if it meant Grievous could claim that he won their fight. Number 3. 
It could only be won by defeating its owner. The Darksaber was always just a lightsaber, at least when Tar Vizsla wielded it during his time as a Jedi Knight in the Jedi Order. But after he returned to Mandalore with the weapon, it became a symbol of leadership. Eventually, in order to claim ownership of the blade, a custom was developed. You needed to defeat its current owner. The development of this custom makes sense, since leadership of the Mandalorian clans could be won in a duel, as Ulic Keldroma famously did when he defeated Mandalore, the Indomitable, in the Great Sith Wars, bringing the Mandalorians into the Sith fleet. Number 2. Several Darksaber owners didn't actually win it in combat. Although everyone knew that you needed to win the Darksaber in combat in order to claim it without criticism, many of its most famous owners didn't actually come about it that way. Sabine Wren and Bo-Katan are just a few who didn't technically win the blade in combat, and so had their ownership questioned throughout their lives, and possibly cursing the Mandalorians. And finally at number 1 we have the Mandalorians stole it from the Jedi. While Tar Vizsla, the original Mandalorian Jedi who created the Darksaber, might have used the weapon often during his campaigns to consolidate power on Mandalore, after his death, the blade fell into the hands of the Jedi Order. It remained there in the very same vault that Jocasta knew guarded in the aftermath of Order 66, until a group of Mandalorians from Tar's clan decided they would steal it and make it the heirloom of their people. Hope you enjoyed today's top 10 facts about the Darksaber. I'd love to do another top 10 about the Darksaber once we get some more information about, you know, how it works. It's crystal, it's power, why it's so powerful, why it's black, and no other lightsaber is. What is so special about it? Why does it make that screeching noise? I'd love to learn more about the history of it, and especially even the hilt, how Mando said it's a form of Beskar that he hasn't seen before. Thanks for watching today's video, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Yo guys, what's going on? So, right now I want to explain to you for 99 cents a month, if you become a member, you get access to all this stuff. And this is of course just the new, because the new year started, so this is just 2022. You get this folder, same on Patreon too. So, you know, you get member exclusive art every single month. This was uh, January, actually here, I'll, I'll click it, you guys can see it. Uh, this was January's and this one is, the artist is Venomous and you can enlarge it, make it, you know, whatever your, um, your background or your phone background, whatever you like. And this is of course the February art. I'm just showing it to you guys here. And then you get comic panels and these are my new favorites, so you get in addition to the members only art every month, you also get comic panels. And these are essentially just fan fictions that I write and direct. And then Kate's Comics comes in there and she actually goes in and creates a whole comic panel out of it. Here, I'll show you the first page. Show you the first page of what you're getting. So yeah, hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of free stuff. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for supporting the channel. And uh, yeah, let me know if there are any other things you want me to add for um, for members and patrons. Uh, I'd love to just like, you know, um, have some cool creative stuff for you guys. So besides art, perhaps there's some other things you guys want, like music or I don't know, like custom tracks. Anyways, lots of ideas. Hope you enjoy this stuff. 99 cents a month. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.